Hello everyone. Today I will talk about how to tag desktop uh, desktop applications use web security skills. Uh, this may sound weird, but after this talk, you can see how we can pop up a calculator without reversing our binary exploiting knowledge. Uh, I'm Sot. I'm from Tencent Security Film Lab, and I'm a member of Whoops the CDF team. And I have spoken at Zero Nights and Hit B. And my friend Human, he also from Film Lab, and he is a speaker of Asia Sequest. And another friend, uh, he's from Tencent Film Lab too. He's a member of Seclower Security Team, and. Uh, he spoke at zero nice and hit B2. Uh, unfortunately, these two, these two guys doesn't come here. Okay. Uh, when people are talking about attacking desktop applications, you may think about point home. Yeah. Hackers at point home may, uh, may use memory corruption bugs to get a cal calculator. I dream of that one day I can pop, pop up calculators just like them. But there's some difference between me and them. I know, just know something about web security. I can do little reversing. I know nothing about pony. Can I pop up a calculator like people in the Punto? Hmm, that sounds a good question. Yeah. And we notice more and more applications use hybrid technologies. Uh, uh, people write applications use their use frameworks like Electron or NW.js. So their applications can run at all the platforms. And web techniques are used in these frameworks and they may use web techniques to develop their applications. So that's a good news for our web, secu web security researchers. Yeah, we can use web security tricks to pawn them reliably. So let's see how to pop up a calculator, use web security knowledge. Let's keep web security great. <laughs> so let's start off from the attack surfaces. So today in this talk we will talk about three sections. Uh, one is open pause, the second one is UR schemes, and the third one is some features of the applications. Yeah. So we start from uh, when the application opens a port. So why do they open a port? Maybe they open a port for a web server because they want to expose some API calls. And maybe they use the port for debugging and other many other purposes. And the application may bind the port on all the interfaces or on the local host. Yeah, on all the interfaces you can access them re remotely, but how to how do we access the pods on local host? And the browser is our good friend. If the pod the service running on the pod accepts HTTP protocol or it has a tolerance of illegal commands and then we can use browser to attack this local host pods. And before we come to the exploiting, uh, let's see some basics. The same origin policy. Yeah. We say that two pages have the same protocol, host and port, and these two pages are in the same origin. So for pages in the same origin, they can send simple HTTP requests or send requests with custom headers and get the response. If they are not in the same origin, they can only send the HTTP requests and cannot get the response. So how this, uh, this uh, basic restriction in the browsers, there is there a way to bypass this? There comes DNS rebinding. So uh, the process is as follows. Uh, we first access the rebind.com. It will resolve to uh, at attacker's IP and pull the, all the payloads from the attack server. And uh, in the browser, just you just wait with a few 
uh, with a uh, with a few minutes, and you request rebind com again, and then this domain will resolve to the target IP, uh, such as localhost, and uh, in the uh, and uh, uh, the port, the protocol, and the host are not changed in this process. So the browser believes they are in the same origin. So we can attack it, just uh, bypass that OP. Yeah. So we need the, uh, there are some re prerequisites. The web service should not check the host name because we need the we need a domain name that we control. And the victim should wait until the DNS has changed because there is a catch in the browser. And there is a, uh, another attack method called CSRF. And there is some difference uh, about uh, CSRF and DNS rebinding. We can use DNS rebinding to bypass, bypass SOP but if there is a hostname check, it will fail. And if the client cannot wait uh, with a few seconds, and this may be not work. But, C but for CSI, uh, it is restricted by SOP, but uh, it doesn't, uh, the host check doesn't matter, and it will if be effective immediately. So let's just go to a case. And it is a popular third party plugin for WeChat. Uh, it is a popular chat software in China. Yeah. And it is called this WeChat plugin, uh, macOS. Uh, using this third party plugin, we can keep the record message. We can auto reply a message. And it has many users. You see the many stars and many folks, but it just stopped maintained, maintained months ago. And it, ha it binds a port, a fixed port, on localhost and exposes some APIs. From these APIs, you can get all the, all the user's friends, all the chat logs, and you can send any message to any user. And we can use DNS rebinding to attack this plugin. So we reported this issue to the author and the author fixed with checking the host. Yeah, the host cannot be a local host. Because of this host check, we cannot use DNS rebinding to attack them. But it is still affected by a CSR for attack. If, if we know a username, we can then use CSR to send a message to that user. Yeah. So it is not enough to just check the host. Because check the host, it just can just uh, keep DNS rebinding away. You should also use some unpredictable data or path to prevent CSRI attack. Also, most importantly, you should avoid using third party plugins. And there's another case called Xdebug. Xdebug is for PHP debugging, it's a PHP extension. So, how does it work? Uh, uh, first, you should send a request. With uh, this um, in parameters, xdebug session start, just like that URL in the, bot, uh, the URL below. And then the xdebug will connect to a server. And the server can interact with the xdebug. So, which server to connect? xdebug will check the following things in a full back order. The first one, in, uh, in the xdebug's configuration file, the xdebug remote host. If not set, then it will check x4 did four header in the HTTP request. And if not, 
uh, X debug will use remote address. So, if we have these three configurations in the X debug, X debug remote connect back set to true, uh, X debug remote enable set to true, and the remote host is not set. And this is always met for most of the PHP developers. Then we can attack it using DS rebind. We can set up a EVO server waiting for X debug to connect and then use DS rebinding to send a custom X forwarded for header and points to the EVO server. So the event server will connect we all uh, interact with the act debug and finally we can get a real reverse shell. And I have reported this to the PHP. So if you are a PHP developer, if you use act debug and you stays on the on a email page for 40 or, fi or 50 seconds and then you may be hacked. So, how do the ActiBug officially think about this attack? And his response with, he, it thinks this is a, just a rumor. And uh, for developers, himself should take care of the, this, yeah. So anyway. And for Node.js debugging port, or Java debugging port, uh, or Java RMI port, they may also be affected by death rebinding attack or setup attack. So if you find a port opened by an application, you can check it by all interfaces or by some localhost. So you can choose to attack them remotely or using death rebinding or setup effort to attack them. And next part, you are schemes. This is a short part, yeah. Uh, people use URL schemes to launch applications or send some messages inside an application. Uh, we can see the following picture. We can use React code URL schemes to launch React code, yes. And on window, in Windows, uh, it is registered in the registry and has an uh, item for the UI, UI protocol name and the command it will execute. Windows will use shell execute w, this API, to call that command, to call the web code command and launch it. But there is a well known bug in this API. We can use a code to close the former code and we can inject other parameters. So there comes a famous exploit last year for Electron. We can use a Chromium parameter injection and to execute any command, just like that. And we found all frameworks based on Chromium may have the same issue. So the nw.js framework we found a famous application for note taking uh, use nw.js and it has 200 millions of users. So we can just in inject Chromium parameters to execute uh, any command, just like the electron bug. So Here comes the demo. Uh, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, we ha we set our web server local on the local host, and this is pro explore page. Yeah. If we clicked that, we will get a cal calculator. Okay, this is the first calculator. <laughs> and this bug is fixed, uh, already fixed. Yeah. 
and uh, in this years, in this May, uh, Microsoft released a patch called KB4497935. If you applied this patch, you will find the UI scheme is no UI included. So in this case, we cannot inject parameters because the code are UI encoded. We cannot close the formal code. <laughs> Maybe your scheme is that, or there is some bypass. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So if you found, if you want to find your scheme box, you should check the your schemes that the application has. Also the Framework has. Don't, fac don't forget the framework. Yes. And the main part, we attack the features of the application. And this section, we have three parts. First one is cross site scripting in the desktop applications. And the second part section is for pri privileged APIs. And the last one is for improper protocol handler. And the cross-site scripting story begins from Markdown editors. And in the year 2016, we found many Markdown editors just renders the JavaScript in the preview window, such as MOU, Markdown, or, or even VS Code. So um, many of the Markdown editors just uh, previews the page in a file domain. So we can use the JavaScript excuse on the file domain to steal files on the local disk. And we can steal some credentials from the local host and we may clone his account and log in, in another machine. And also if uh, it's use, uh, it has some privileged APIs, or it has a, it uses a outdated browsers. We can, we maybe get remote code execution. Yeah, let's see a case for Macdown. It has thousands of stars and many folks. And this is also, a, uh, this, this exploit can also be used in the latest version. So we can see the location is uh, in a file domain and we can use XML HTTP request to get the ETC password. And we can also send that uh, the response uh, uh, that the container of the ETC password to the remote server so we can steal local files. Yeah. I reported this in the year 2016 and it is still not fixed. <laughs> um, but Things are always getting harder. There's little cross site scripting in Markdown editors nowadays. And some editors use content security policy to limit JavaScript execution. And some editors use sandbox to run the JavaScript in the in a, uh, isolated context and there without node modules. So the, pro, uh, the issues are harder to find and harder to exploit. But we should think uh, about the libraries that used by Markdown editors. Mm, the first one, Mermaid. Uh, it is used for charts or diagrams. It has, it, it, on, the, on the GitHub, it has thousands of used products and Many stars and many folks. Uh, we have found three cross site scriptings in the latest world when I uh, make these slides, but now in the latest, latest world it has fixed. Okay. Uh, latest world here is when I make these slides. It is fixed days ago, just days ago, yeah. Uh, we can say the Hyper, uh, the HackMD, the Evernote, and GitLab may, uh, are use Mermaid. And there is the cross, 
side scripting. And the first two just renders the HTML. And the last one need a click. It does, yeah, it does click cross site scripting. And here is demo page, the of official demo page we can alert. And next to Katax and Matrix, uh, these two libraries for math type setting, and uh, in their old versions, it has a click, click cross site scripting too. And this too is reported by other guys. Okay. And the last library, flowchess.js, it has a click um, cross site scripting too. In the latest version, this has not fixed yet. So, if you use Mermaid, please up upgrade it to the latest version. Yeah. And the older version of MathJax and Kadax has cross site scripting issues. And the latest version of Flowchart has a click cross site scripting. As these issues lies in the libraries, so these issues may affect more applications than we can find. So here comes a case for HackMD. Uh, it uses Mermaid. It is an online Markdown editor, and it has many, many users. Uh, we just used the payload before for Mermaid, but the payload is blocked by CSP. Yeah, we cannot see the alert box here because the CSP just blocks it. And then we checked the CSP. We found a, an interesting site there. The Google Analytics. There is no way for using Google Al Analytics to bypass CSP by Kitten. Yeah. So we can use Google Tag Manager and set a, set a variable there and set a malicious function. We can define our a malicious code there. And the code will be shown in the Google Analytics. And we, you can check the details in the following link. So then we can get a large box. Yeah. And we found there is also a desktop allocation for HackMD. It use uh, there are two uh, two elements. One is a script element for render.js in a uh, excuse in a privileged context, and a web view tag renders the user page. There is no node integration. So how to turn our cross site scripting in the web view tag? To RCE in the desktop application. So let's check the render.js first. We can see from the code, it adds a event listener for DOM ready, and when DOM ready, it will get the title from the web view and set it to the inner HTML, to the privileged context. So, if we can control the title, we can execute any JavaScript code in a privileged context. So we can use our create site scripting to redirect the page to our email page, which can trigger the DOM ready event. And then our page have a, a special header, a special title. And we can use this to uh, to call the node modules uh, process and uh, uh, the chart process and execute any command. And then we can see the calculator. Just click the malicious markdown and pops up the calculator. <laughs> Okay, I have reported this to the HackMD and it has already fixed. So um, there's uh, some, in some cases, we may not execute JavaScript. We can only inject some HTML code. 
So we can also use this, uh, use HTML code for phishing or just advertising. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So the next section, the next part uh, for pre privileged APIs. Uh, privileged APIs comes from uh, about two ways. One is the node modules, another maybe some uh, from the custom APIs. The program just added these uh, APIs. Uh, programs uh, usually use a JS bridge with some wrapper to provide custom APIs, and these usually has a public documentations. So let's see a case. It is a case for a popular chat application. It has billions of users. In this application, it has a has an embedded browser with some custom APIs. So if you render a when you render your page on the embedded browser, you can call the custom APIs because there is no domain restriction. And these APIs are well documented for developers. And how to open URLs in the embedded browsers? There are two ways. One is in the special type message, which is called fit card message. Just like uh, that. And also we can use a in inner app application URL scheme. We can use a special scheme to open a uh, open the embedded browser. And in the custom APIs, there's two interesting APIs. One is download a file. If you call this API, you can uh you can pass a URL to it and it will download a file from that URL. But uh, it will pop up a box for the user to choose the location to save that file. Yeah, they, this needs some user interactions. And another API called open local file. It just opens the file you just downloaded without confirmation. Yeah, this API is without user interaction, but only works on macOS. Uh, so we can think we can make it download a uh, ELF to execute, but failed because he's, it has no X mode after downloaded. Yeah, we can we may we think we can use a bash or Python script, but it is usually open opened by a text editor. Hmm. So how to exploit this? Java is a good friend. Yeah, we can just make it download a jar file and use that API. Just open the jar; it will execute our Java code. So, if you have Java and you click a fit card message from a hacker, and a dialog will ask you to save a file. Ah, uh, save a file usually harmless, so you click save. And then you are hacked. So let's see the demo. Yeah, maybe some conversations for Sura engineering. And come the feed card message. Just click it in the embedded. Uh, yeah, you should click see you. And the, the calculate. <laughs> And this is already fixed in the latest version, yeah. And it is fixed by oh, just open the folder instead of the file. Yeah. And the last part. Um, uh, let's go to the part for protocol handler. Uh, when developing desktop, desktop allocations, you should pay attention to these three protocols. HTTP, JavaScript, or file pro protocol. For HTTP proto protocol, you should avoid you render pages in a in an untrusted context, because uh, if you have an outdated uh, browser call, you may be affected by the browser one day. Or if you 
exists JavaScript, uh, you, the JavaScript may exist in a file domain you can steal files. And for the file protocol, you can use it to launch programs in, uh, in, your, in your computer. Or the file protocol may leak NTLM credentials. So just be, care, uh, be careful of a tag. So uh, we find a library and it is used in Chinese applications and it is widely used. It has uh, many stars and many folks. And uh, it supports HTML like tags if you set show HTML to true. And there are some tags for, such as a tag for hyperlink, an i tag for an image, and a c tag for a text color, change the text color. And in a chat application, it, show, it, it says show HTML to true. And it renders the tags in the chat group name or your personal status. We can use C tag here to change the text uh, colors. Yeah, we change it to the red. And change the color may be harmful. We can use I tag to do some NTM relay attacks. So we can use I tag to insert a file protocol, a uh, SMB protocol. And it will, uh, uh, in Windows, it will send the Windows credentials autom automatically once the tag are rendered. And, you are the, and these tags are in the status, personal status or on a group name. So usually this can be done without user interaction. And the attacker can get the credentials. They can just do some offline brute force works. Or the attacker can relay the credentials to other services such as to the exchange server. So we can log in into the exchange server on behalf of the victim and get all the emails. Or if the victim have another machine have the same, share the same password, we can relate to that machine and get remote code execution. And there is another case for Gitra. And Gitra is developed um, based on Java, and it used XML to describe a project. So there is a XSCE in the Ghidra project description file. It is found by this guy. Yeah, we can use XSCE to steal files or use XSCE to send HTTP request, but can we think turn the XSE to RCE. Uh, based on our previous research, this can be done. Uh, we found that Java will send credentials when it encounters a NTL, NTLM based 401 HTTP response. Not the basic authentication. It is a uh, it is a uh, NTLM based for one HTTP response. Yeah. The attacker can set up a malicious HTTP server to response uh, that. And the Java will send the credentials to the attacker and the attacker can just reflect the credentials to the C machine, just the C machine. So, if you just open a malicious project and you have opened your SMB service and then you may be hacked. So here's the demo. Uh, we set up a malicious server and here is our Gitra. And, and it will open the malicious project. And then the XSE the triggers. We can dump the hashes. Just get the hashes of that machine. And then we can use the pass, pass the hash to 
execute any commands on the victim. We just use that hash. And there is a mistake. Uh, there are mistake. And uh, we fix the command. Yeah, we can see the calculator. <laughs> So there's many features in desktop applications. So we can find cross site scripting, and we can find if there are some privileged APIs. We can find how it handles the protocol. We can find that and check how, how we can attack this application. So here's come to the end. If you are a Developer, just be careful while debugging PHP, Node.js, or some other version of Java. You may be, you may be, be popped up a calculator on your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you are a developer, you should be careful while using these libraries. Uh, some other version of Mermaid and other version of MathJax. Attacks and the latest version of flowcharts. And if you use DLLib, you should not set the show HTML to true. And if you if you use NW NW.js, be careful while re registering a URL scheme. And thanks for this, guys. And thank you all. Thank you. So maybe any questions? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you guys.